You do not believe how much trouble we have had just to get this fucking episode recorded. It's the latest episode of the ARPG podcast, episode 60. You have to check. You have to check. Ha! Hi. Yeah, you motherfucker. Yeah, I just checked. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I have them up or not. You just don't need to check, bro. Well, either way, it's been a long time. We just... Oh, my goodness. Trying to get this episode recorded was so much fun. So let's just start with that. We try to record these weekly now just because, you know, get a little rhythm. And, you know, it was going well. Then Chewie's computer exploded. I'm like, okay, that sucks. Then, oh, look, I have to go to, I have to go away on the weekend. Oh, great, this. And then we tried to record it last Monday. Oh, look, a power outage knocks out our computer. <sighs> well, I also had uh, medical appointments too, actually. Yeah, that too. But like, it, just... it didn't matter about last Monday. It's been it's been it's been a struggle to get this recorded, but we are here and we are here to catch up on so much anime. Like holy shit, we have about two and a half, three weeks of so much stuff. Anime. So, how about again? I'm just gonna take what's on top of my list. Oh, the list again. <clears throat> and I'm going to start all the way down, and we're going to start with Bleach. I mean, that's you. I, I, <laughs> I don't know what you want from me in this one. Um, You ever get the feeling you're watching a show set itself up to fall? Yeah. Like, I'm looking at Bleach, and I'm enjoying it. I think the first bit, the, uh, Invasion of the Quincy has been done well. But it's one of those things where, and I have similar fearing, feelings to uh, my hero's current arc in the manga, you're setting up a villain to be so powerful, it takes an illogical thing to defeat him. And like, the Quincy are so fucking strong right now. Like, straight up, they are ridiculously strong, and I'm kind of worried we're already walking into that territory. Huh. Though, I did like... So, the ending of episode 5 ended with the head captain finally starting fighting, and I liked how that was a way to power up the other captains to fight. Rather than the bullshit in season 2, we're just like, oh, we had a mark on our chest that had us weaker in fighting, but now it's not here. Okay. So overall, I mean, it's enjoyable, but I'm starting to see the things that have hampered Bleach since season two. <laughs> Setting up villains to fail. And making so many villains that we don't, like, there's like so many Quincy. There's so many Quincy, Chewie. And it's just like, okay, we got these nameless fucking characters, right? Like, here's J, here's F, here's W, right? Here's, um, Budapai. You won't remember like, Budapai because he's gonna be destroyed the first one. First one destroyed, and you, or the second one destroyed, because nobody remembers the second one. Like, here's the thing, the Sternritter, right, are the main Quincy force, right? I'm gonna bring back my gun. And they literally gave letters to every single fucking character. <laughs> A through Z. Every single one has a letter. And I'm going to guarantee like 90% of them we will not give a shit about. Okay. Like, the, there are a couple, like, there's obvious ones. So there's this blonde idiot who is right next to your watch. Your watch? The king. And like, okay, this show will probably want us to care about them. But in the end, I'm just like, I don't think you're going to really fix the issues. Because one of the issues last season was like, outside of Grimjall and... The main person that oh what the fuck was his name? I can't even remember his name. Holy shit. Um <laughs> the, 
The, um, are, look, are you talking about the main villains here? Oh uh, yeah, the uh U- It's um it's this motherfucker. Right? He was the right hand man of Aizen. Oh. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like outside of him and Grimjaw, we literally knew next to nothing about every single other RN car that Aizen had. Like, okay, we got to know a little bit about them when they were in battles, but... Okay? okay. That's just... That, to me, that's fucking meaningless. I don't want to be like, oh, here's the battle, now here's... It reminds me so much of when Metal Gear Solid 4 had the uh, Beauty and the Beast unit, right? Yeah. So they were the main villains. Every every Metal Gear Solid has a main villain. So like uh, we had the Cobra mm-hmm. unit MGS three, mm-hmm. the Sons of the Boss in MGS one, like mm-hmm. all that type of stuff. The Beauty of the Beast unit were essentially these scantily clad women who were mentally fucked. Oh yeah, no, no, I remember those. Yeah, I remember. And like, they were so when pointless. You beat, when you beat them, uh when you beat them, <laughs> you could actually take they were you go to this like white whatever Purgatory uh-huh. area, and then you could actually take up the ca- camera and like take pictures because they would pose for you. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. so funny. <laughs> yeah, and like it's meant to be like this thing about like oh they, how people get fucked in the head due to war and whatnot, right? And yeah. you only learned about them after you fought them, and that was only when Drevin, the uh, the gunsmith of the game, just monologued to you. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I'd like I'd like to know about the characters before <clears throat> you don't get to know them a bit, mm. and like it, it's just it's clear to me that Bleach is already walking into that one. Yeah, but I mean, I I did say the first part is enjoyable and it has been. So I don't think it's anything I'm saying, but people are acting like second coming of Christ. I'm like, no, 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 it isn't. Repeat. Anyway, uh, next for me was Golden Calmly. Uh, yes. I actually really enjoyed the previous, essentially the previous couple episodes have been about Sugimoto trying to figure out what he wants for uh, Asapura, the I, since Asripa's apparently being set up as the next uh, Ainu queen. Oh. Like, that's what her father was trying to set. Like, that's the goal here. And... Uh. Sugimoto's fighting this because he's like, I'm tired her, of her having to fight, right? Okay. And he's making a mistake because the end of the latest episode <laughs> has him agree to meet the main unit of the Seventh Division. Mm. And the problem is the main unit of the Seventh Division is led by a fucking psychopath. In uh, Surumi, the guy with, like, the skull plate on his head. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens after that, but, like, he is just... He is... It, it legit looks like they are gonna... They are literally gonna be walking into a general trap. But no, it was definitely it was definitely a good episode, I will say. It definitely pulled myself back into the series. Okay, as okay. I was a little disassociated with it. Since again, it's so long. This is episode 42. Right. So like Golden Conway's been going on for a while now. You gotta remember the first episode was four years ago. I I feel like I've kind of forgotten what about honestly, but I I kind of remember at the same time. Well, mm-hmm. it's but just yeah, been no, that so long. That, it's just been that it's been long. a long time, yeah. 
Um, but that's it for Monday for me. Uh, Why was that a Monday? Oh, fr I don't have a Monday schedule. Uh, second. But on Tuesday, <laughs> we get Chainsaw Man. One second here. Monday, 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 Monday. Okay. What is Shinmai? I feel like I keep asking this. What's Shinmai? Huh? Is Shinmai Rekun? Is that something I'm watching? No, I don't think so. I I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It's a show that's on Monday, apparently. I, I don't I don't recognize it, so I'm just gonna say I didn't watch it. Go on. All right, but uh, for Tuesday for me, there's only one show on Tuesday. It's Chainsaw Man Tuesdays. Oh, lucky you. I am trying so hard to not read ahead, Chewy. Um, I've already been spoiled, so I can't really. Like, I do know some. Like, it's impossible to escape spoilers in this day and age, so I do know some, right? I mean, the only well, way to escape is just to completely disconnect yourself, but, yeah. you know. Like, I know about Makima. <laughs> Other stuff but just, too, but yeah, yeah. I love every second of it. It is so good. The introduction of power and how she tried to uh, screw over our boy Denji. Funny, funny combo. I really like Aki quite a bit. It was interesting to see his connection to the Gun Devil, even though I was kind of wondering how the Gun Devil led to a tornado destroying the house of his friends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the two character, the three characters with him, the dude, the scaredy cat, and the eye patch lady. All look like characters I'm going to be interested in. And it's just, it's so, like, I also think they really have started to nail the animation. Like, the CG looks great. Mm. The battles are amazing. The battle against the Leech Devil was awesome. Yeah, no, it's actually very good. You got anything to add to Chainsaw Man? I didn't watch, honestly. Well, you do at least know it. I do know of it, but I didn't, I didn't watch the majority. I've been trying to catch up with other things. That is true. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. I'm sorry, we have to time out. Look at what I just found. <laughs> I just put it in our other Discord. <laughs> what the heck? Oh my god, this killed me. Oh my god, this killed me. <laughs> this is a Corviknight, boys. Just a Corviknight. Take. Okay, take okay. Take. Okay, time out, time out, time out. I get, uh, we need to exp explain why I'm laughing my ass off. So, Pokemon are getting revealed every time, right? Oh, give me a second. I could just take the image. Okay, so the new Pokemon games are out next week, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Specifically one week, yet. Oh, yeah. And, well, hopefully 9 p.m. Thursday for me. Oh, my God. So, this is Pokemon. Me. There's this Pokemon called Tinkatung, right? And it's a three-stage Pokemon. It starts out as a Pokemon that's trying to build a hammer, but it keeps having its metal stolen, right? And I thought it was protecting itself with a hammer, but it keeps getting... Yeah, but it gets to that. The first evolution can, remember. What? I thought that was what I read, though. I... I'm going back. I believe it was the second evolution that started to protect itself. Oh, where the fuck did I post it? Oh my god, hold on a sec. It's so hard to find. Uh, did I send it to Arsh? Let me check. Out of my way, out of my way, out of my way. Don't care about that. The Dunsparce makes me laugh. I really do not want to go through the whole fucking thing just to find it. Here. But essentially... The Pokemon evolves, and its one goal is building a hammer. And in its second stage evolution, it gets aggressive as hell. The third stage, it's fucking hilarious. It becomes 
Tinkaton. Its Pokedex description describes this intelligent Pokemon has a very daring disposition. It knocks rocks into the sky with its hammer, aiming for flying Corviknights. This little shit is just sending rocks into the air. Oh my god. <laughs> and the best part is they updated Corvic Knight's Pokedex. So Corvic Knight in the Gala region was a taxi service Pokemon, right? Mm -hmm. So you remember how in Gala there would be the old man that would like take the taxi to you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Corvic Knight's Pokedex entry reads... Corvic Knight cannot serve its a taxi service in Palea due to a poke the Pokemon's natural predators will attack it when it flies, endangering the customers. Oh, oh right. Oh, I see it now, actually. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's fucking great. Anyway, was there any anime on Tuesday? Uh... Um, me a second, I might as well just show that picture real quick. That tweet, if I can find it anymore, I don't know where it went now. My second, gotcha, that's fucking cold. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, it's smaller. I'm laughing at this. Oh, uh. okay, you see it. Delete. Delete. Oh, I can't delete. Oh, my God, I got to delete. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, that was great. Oh, that was so fucking great. Holy shit. Anyway. Uh, the uh, Tuesday, you said? Uh, was there anything you watched on Tuesday you want to talk about? I need to catch up with Shinobi no Itoki, even though it's weird and sad and... Yeah. Why haven't you? I've been catching up on everything else. I, I yeah. don't. I don't think I even caught caught up with the latest uh, Iruma. Last two episodes. Ago. Just go to Wednesday, I guess. Shadow. Uh, I didn't watch this episode this Wednesday, but I. I'm gonna be honest. This one. episode was kind of dull this week. Okay, well then, I'll just talk about... Well, last week was the resolution of the... Yeah, last week was the resolution of uh, the, the white-haired girl being kidnapped. And, and the, full, the full tune just came out there. Oh my god. Uh, the one thing I did like, so I will say, I find it hilarious that our character, our boy Sid... Thinks he's being like, oh, it's all delusions, right? Nothing's actually happening until reality is just like, oh, you've not only found a cult, you've now made yourself so famous you have copycats trying to ruin your name. You didn't even find out, you just, you just listed them out and it's like, oh, they're real. <laughs> it's just like, oh, like, I, I know it's probably not going to happen. I would love for an episode where... Sid has everything revealed to be real, and he just sits there in shock. You know what? That's probably the ending. <laughs> That'd be great. But no, honestly, I'm just satisfied. I don't know if it will be on this anime. I feel like that's like the ending of the actual story. I'm enjoying so. it quite a bit. It's a fun little romp that has... Honestly, just... Yeah, it's just really fun. Mm. Uh, um... But, um... Wednesday also brings in your uh whatever it's called Mob uh, Psycho. Oh, I mean, where's that? That's just that too. But it's hard to believe how good Mob Psycho is, man. Like, just it's hard to believe how good Mob Psycho is. <laughs> so, into the do their this whole. Cool is built on the fact that Dimple has essentially lost his mind and he's mind controlling people to become a god mm. and Mob shows up and you know he instead of like attacking Dimbo he's like you know what I'm sorry for not understanding you and that type of thing mm. and you're thinking that it's building up to since the episode before ended with Mob hitting 100 in his stress level 
And you're thinking that this episode is building up to Mob, you know, fighting Dimple. But it's not. In the end, Dim Mob is... Sorry. He's like, I can trust you, Dimple. Because you, you, you gave me an honest opinion that my shirt was shit. And he's calling out Dimple like, you're not actually dangerous. You just got carried away. And Dimple's just like, no, I'm evil. I'm evil. I'm evil. Right? So he's trying to, like, go it. And this mob realizes that he got carried away with his, like, quest to be popular. Right? And it comes to this, like, really heart in conclusion of them working together as Dimple, you're like, you know what? I'm gonna stop going for this and I'm actually just going to be, you know, mob's friend. Right? And then it ends in a surprisingly tragic way. So... They are walking off, and then the broccoli tree that Dimple built, well, it essentially gains sentience. <laughs> and it attacks. And by the looks of it, it seemingly Dimple sacrifices himself at the end. To allow Mob to live and to stop this whole broccoli tree nonsense. And it's one of the strengths of Mob Psycho being able to tell emotional stories really well. Because this kind of came out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> and I love how the episode ends. It ends with everybody just wondering what the hell happened. Like, but like, what's going on? Why? What? Why do I have no memory? Or maze? No kidding, I don't. And it. It. Yeah. So oh. dip while Dimple dies to destroy the tree. Everybody is like, oh, what's going on? It's not you, right? The tree just literally flies off. Uh, okay. And while everybody's wondered why their memory's hazy, Mob somewhat remembers. Well. And the episode ends with him crying and saying thank you to Dimple. And it's kind of like just, this is why I love Mod Psycho. It's this type of storytelling that, hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was Dimple's last poor Dimple. Poor Dimple. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so Wednesday. Yeah. That also has a uh, um a piece of shit show. I it's move love time. Alright, P. And what I will say is fucking our shade. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think I've come to the conclusion I am going to be using Tink Ton. Come to the conclusion that Move Love is weird. Yeah, Move, Move Love is lewd. Oh, weird. Yeah, it is. Uh, so, as I mentioned before... Ooh, I know that. Yeah. It, it, as I mentioned before, so our main character was trying to get over the fact that he... Essentially, the death of his teacher, right? Mm -hmm. 
And this led to him going into the past to try to escape. But of course, reality follows him and it kills his teacher. And it turns out the friends he had, the more he hung up with, hung out with them, they would eventually lose the memory of him. Okay. And this happened to the girl he loved, Suika. And the, honestly, it was masterful writing because what helped him push mm. back to going to the present was the fact that Suika was writing a diary of every day. And it was coming, and you could see little moments come in of her like, I'm losing my memory. She's like, she's actually realizing it, right? Hmm. And that makes the whole thing really, really tragic. And she's talking about how, like, I've never been so happy. There's no way I can forget about this. Not after my dream came true. And then... The next... Hmm. Yep, she forgot about it. And that really does hit him. And it's the driving force that sends him back to the present, you know, to be, you know, a savior, right? So, of course, he's now getting reintegrated with everything in the present. And then last episode reveals something. Turns out, there's a Sumika in the real world now. Because remember, Sumika was part of the previous timeline. You know, the one that he came from to stop this nightmare from happening, right? Right. It's hard to follow. It's really hard to follow. I, I kind of... Okay, here. so... The Unlimited World is without Subika, and now Subika is back as a robot. The Zero Zero Unit. Okay. But right. she has Subika's memories for some reason. It's, just, it's so fucking hard. Okay. I just feel like I'm, I, I should just bring up a gif of somebody nodding constantly at this point. Yeah, you probably should, to be honest. Essentially, what happens is this robot, Subika, is the way they're going to be able to get through to the hive mind of the beta. Okay. And they're trying to use that. The problem is Subika's memories are coming back to this robot. Yeah. And it's not working because it's not the memories of the timeline that Takaru just came from. Uh -huh. It's the memories of the timeline that Takaru is trying to stop. Oh, okay. And I'm going to remind you what happened in that because um, it's, it's kind of fucking disgusting. Oh, yeah, the, the weird... Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, and... essentially what happened is... Sumika and Takiru were captured by the beta. And... Uh. Yeah, the beta experimented on Sumika by essentially just making her have unlimited orgasms, and when things weren't going well, they removed organs and just made the sexual organs bigger. Uh... Yeah, yeah. And those are the memories that our girl is remembering. Uh, uh, She's remembering Takiru getting killed. Uh, uh, and like, I like how it ends, the episode ends with her hysterically laughing and essentially in like a yandere tone saying, I, I, I'm going to protect you. I can finally get revenge on them for the way they killed you. And like, it's dark, it's interesting. And also they revealed that, uh, if I understood this right, the doctor was the reason his teacher died. Hmm. Uh, because Takaru told her about the beta attack, right? So the beta attack early in the first season was prevented because Takaru knew it was coming. So she used that opportunity to capture some beta. Right? 
And it turns out, if I was listening into it correctly, since at this point my brain was fucking mush, that the beta word being there was caused by her. <laughs> and I'm just like, really? Was that needed? I don't know. Like, was making Yuko Sensei into more of a vindictive person that needed? Like, mm. I, I, like, I could understand her wanting to capture the beta to experiment on them, because, you know, that's kind of what war is, right? You try to get any type of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Advantage on your enemy. But, like, okay, Yuko Sensei being the reason the accident happened, which caused all of Takura's trauma, yeah, I'm totally, like, was that needed? Mm. I don't think so. Anyway. The, the one thing I will say about Move Love is while it's insane, you see moments of good storytelling, like I just pointed out, right? Mm. I just want to see more beta battles. I find it absolutely ridiculous that we have seen such little. Anywho. Um, up next is Thursday for me. Uh, Thursdays. I don't think I watched anything on Thursday. There's the Ooh. remake of Urusei Yatsura, Akibi, Akiba Made Sense Out, Mushikabure Hime, and Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Did you watch any of those? Uh, Legend of Galactic Heroes is a Friday show for me. Oh, okay, well, it says here, yeah, because it's probably aired really late, that's probably why. Anyway, uh, for me, Thursday is actually Cad Cole. Yeah, Cantai Collection finally started. I don't see it on here. Okay, well. It's no. eight episodes long, so it's another one of the short ones. And honestly, I liked it. I will say Kantai Collection has a little bit of an issue with revisionist history in World War II. Hmm. So they tackle, they change a lot of things that happen since they are essentially replaying the hits of the Pacific War. So that itself is icky like it's not something that i totally like but i do enjoy the show because i think it does enough to differentiate itself like it's not meant to, it's not meant to be this revisionist history thing okay. right And the one thing I do in the one thing I do like about it is they're going with the story that the movie set up where fleet girls, if they get sunk, they become abyssals, and abyssals become fleet girls if they're destroyed, right? Mm -hmm. But overall, I think the one thing I really like about this season thus far is the animation is very, very good. Like, the battle animation has this interesting feeling to it. I love the way the cameras move. There's a moment later in episode two where Shigure is fighting to defend, and they do this weird... Like, I'll send you a screenshot of it. it just give me a second to get to it, because they do this weird thing where they have, like... This. One second. So they do this weird thing with the screen where they essentially have three triangles appear. So I just sent you a screenshot for one for one thing. So they got a shot on her cannons and a shot on Shiguri herself. Yeah. And I'm like, I like this. And I like the way the camera work they've done. Like, everything just has this scale to it, right? Mm-hmm. So it feels big. There's a shot of one of the aircraft carriers. There's a close range shot of her AA fire, right? Like this little, it's a first person view of it. Here's another screenshot. And of it just like firing across at one of the PT boats. And it's just, 
little things like that have made the battles really good. And I don't mean to shit on season one, as I think season one was a... It was good. It had energy, but there's no denying that season one was a product of its time. Probably shit shit on season one. Sit on it! Oh, wait. Damn. Okay, well, after this, I have to, have to say my thing. Go on. All right. But yeah, like season one was a product of its time, right? Mm -hmm. So like no, CG yeah. wasn't great. Nope. It did have its moments. There was a specific part with, uh, I believe it was Shoyu and her sister. Wait, no, I can't say that. I can't say that CG wasn't great. No, 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 no. They could have done better. They could have done better. Okay, no, it wasn't. Sorry. Oh, fuck. It's so hard to remember. It's so hard to remember it's all the. It's more around the lines of when they work with CG, they didn't work with it very well. Oh, you right. Yeah, like God, there, was, there, there, there was. There was stuff were, that could run CG even older than that was still good. There were moments in season one that I generally enjoyed. Like, uh, I think there was a battle where. Um, just before the hotel part with. Uh, Yamada, where there's a shot of oh fuck, I forget her name. It was the one that hated Kaga, if anybody's remembered. There's a shot of them just getting bombarded by attacks and having her dance around the explosions and the waves. That was one of the cooler shots, right? right? But it had the problem that Kingdom had. It switched between 2D and CG. A lot, a lot, or like the very Not first season? Not as much as Kingdom, but you would notice it. So like second season, almost. No, the first season. No, uh, yeah, second season, yeah, sorry. Okay. Like, remember when I found, remember how many times it switched between CG when Lu Bu Wei walked in there? And like, I get it, it's easier for them to animate the battle scenes in CG, you get a lot more movement. But like, there's no, like the CG, you notice it right away. And I never like when I notice CG right away. <laughs> but like, there, there are some good moments in the battles where uh, Shokane was being protected from the woe class, by the way, woe class, best class. And there's just, her sister grabs her and you just see this battle of the explosions and all that and her just dodging it. It's really cool. So, like, the, the first season did have moments like that. I will always go to, back to when uh, uh, Congo literally punched a missile out of the air. Okay. Like, those are moments. But, again, I feel like season two just has it better because the CG is so much better! So much. Oh, so much. But, again, that's just, like, that's a, that's a thing of its time, right? Um, Look, there was good CG in 2015. There's nobody denying it. But there was more bad CG in 2015. Holy fuck, Kentai Collection was 2015. It's hard to forget. Mm. Anyway, um, you want to talk about something next, right? Right? What? You said you had something to talk about. Oh, right. Uh, on Wednesday, actually, uh, I believe reincarnated as a sword also. Um, sure. I want to see how it's doing rating-wise, just to get I an mean, idea. Like, yeah. Well, it's doing pretty good rating-wise. It's interesting. I think last time... Yeah, weren't it. you talking about discrimination with this one? Yeah, there was a little bit because of the um one of the main characters, the girl, considered like you know black cat bad luck, really yeah. bad luck. So a lot of people superstitious, superstitious, and as a reason, and as a sorry, for that reason alone, they're discriminating her a little or a lot, a lot of them, not a lot of them. Sorry, a, a fair bit of them mm -hmm. are screaming hate. Yeah, uh, yeah, no. I think the last episode I was talked about, she was participating in a raid with the guild. That they sent like an expedition team to take out a bunch of these goblins because of a goblin horde, like a goblin king or queen and stuff like that. Turns out they were like rooting in like a 
a dungeon. They had to destroy the dungeon core and stuff like that. Uh, I think last episode, MC Frey, I think. Fran, sorry, Fran. Uh, and the sword Shisho teacher um, basically bolted off to the very end main dungeon room. Where they killed the Goblin King and Queen very easily. But turns out the dungeon keeper or something, whoever would had like control of the dungeon core itself and was creating the dungeon or had management of the dungeon that the goblins had were coming out of set up as their base, had summoned a, a low rank demon or something like that. So she they the MCs basically had their first sort of big wall to overcome um I, I believe i don't know if it was this latest episode or the last episode I'm not sure if i watched the last one or not um fran it was basically depicted that way that it was a difficult battle because of like all of how like fran getting her she had like her wrist cut off i think or her hands cut off at her wrists both of them <laughs> and her the mc had to like the sword itself, the MCs, whatever teacher mm -hmm. had to like, you know, heal him back quickly. So it was like, it was depicted. It was a very difficult fight. Um, they were able to, of course, oh, prevail because you know, and stuff like that. Um, I remember very much what happens after that. They snagged a whole bunch of stuff, basically, from them. The, the, like, the magic stone and the sword the, the demon was using. And, you know, that even though it was kind of a... I guess it was very suspicious on the uh, guild side when they got only the demon's body that they were like, well, what happened to the stone yeah. and stuff like that? But uh, the MC, the sword, the, the uh, sword actually, you know, gains levels and whatever experience... And, and sustenance, I suppose, in a sense, from destroying and like sapping these magic stones from monsters and stuff like that. So, uh, I don't, I don't remember what else happened after that. I think they were to celebrate, and they were trying to move on to the next arc. But I don't remember if there was any. So far, it's been okay again. Just a very. It's, it, 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 it's kind of like uh. I like it's a steady Eddie type show. Yeah, it's like slime, but no. not as engaging type of thing. Yeah. Maybe not All as right, good of a um, story either, but like, you know, like slime. And for All me, right. now we move on to Friday, right? Uh, yes. So yes. Friday actually has another show debut, another gotcha game show. Chewy, why the fuck is Ark Knight so good? I don't know. Like, I already like the character designs of Ark Knights. I think out of, like, the gacha games I see, they probably have the best. Why is my, why is my loving so good? I don't know. But I, I, went into, I went into Ark Knights with, like, you know, no expectations, right? Just wanted to watch it. Thought it'd be cool, right? I've loved every single second of it. Yes. The first three episodes are essentially setting up the main conflicts of the world. And the world has so much depth. Holy crap. Yes. Like, I'm actually... It's, it's insane to me. How much depth Arknights has. Yes. So the whole story is built about a world of discrimination and disease. Mm -hmm. So what happened is we had this thing where... Uh, Essentially, best way to describe it is there's this disease in the world okay. that is super infectious and it causes people to, I think, crystallize? To terrestrialize. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. It's exactly what it is. The uh, haha, you're so funny. It's called. I got the cool hat. Oripathy. And the description is, a malignant infectious disease, patients will soon die after their bodies start to crystallize and become new vectors for the infection. 
So, you remember The Last of Us, right? Yes. The Last of Us disease was spread through spores. Yes, fungi. Yeah. Like that. This is it. This is in a similar vein. What, like the stone monsters become? No, the people who crystallize eventually they start spreading the disease after. So the crystallized monsters can move around afterwards. No, they're not. I don't know if they're monsters, but like they just like literally... whatever crystallized infected humans do they move around mm. like the the dying infected body eventually will disintegrate. Oh, okay. So they yeah they don't. They don't yeah. do it like the witch McCall. No, but like it's in a similar fashion, right? Honestly, that's scarier. But what I will say is that Oh what the hell? The four okay, best. Okay. Uh what I will say, so like that itself, okay, that interests me, right? Mm. Then there's the discrimination aspect of it. Which is Fucking insane. So there are many nations, there are many countries around the world. And the big thing with them is they all have different way, different things that they do to those infected. Okay. And this leads to, you know, just straight up hell. People getting discriminated left, right, and center. And it's one of those things where you just sit there and you go to yourself and say, oh, this is like, this is actually a terrible world. Most games are. So. And most. We have okay, Rhodes yeah. Island, which are the main faction. They're fighting. They're infected people fighting to. You know, find a cure and stop absolute anarchy right hmm. while on the other side you have reunion which are infected people who are just like you know what fuck you we are burning the entire world down okay and i just i just can't get over it i just cannot get over the fact that this show has a story that is so good. Like, this is, a, this is, I get that gotcha games are getting more and more and more and more big, right? So Genshin Impact, great example, right? But like this world building is actually insane. So what I want to talk about to end this is just, the countries and how they treat the infected, right? So we have the nation of Ursus, which is famous for its persecution onto infected people, right? Okay. And not only that, Ursus scapegoats them, which is really the main reason why Reunion rised, right? Because they were tired of it. Okay. Chernobog is where people are just, again, more... More, uh, more infected scapegoated. Yawn. Even though they do treat the infected badly, it's not as worse as Ursus. Okay. Then we have Victoria, which promises human rights, but it's actually in actual practice that they are heavily exploiting them as well. And you see this everywhere else, right? Yes. So it's interesting to see, and I'm wanting to learn more about this. And also, again, the animation is stellar. They've had a couple good fights throughout the first three episodes, and I'm just loving it. It's really surprising how much I am hooked to Arknights. Okay. All right. Surprising now, uh, show of the year. I definitely do think if you asked me at the end of this season what show okay so we're three episodes four episodes five episodes into most seasons right uh well, i mean we're almost done with the year so yeah. if you ask me right now what episode i think is what show i think has the best to 
be a uh, thing surprised Arknights. Biggest surprise of the year? I do think Arknights has a legitimate chance of being that. Positive. Yeah. Oh, like, it's no, really actually, that's good. not fair. I'm just going to say surprise of the year. And then uh, I'll, the year. I'll quickly mention Legend of Galactic Heroes, uh, mostly for this episode this week. Hmm. So what happened is they kidnapped the Emperor, and now the Alliance is trying to decide, do we want to protect this Emperor? Oh, wait, nope. Logram has already declared war. <laughs> So now the Empire and the Alliance are in this struggle. People, citizens of the Alliance don't want to protect the Emperor for reasons as, like, we don't want him, so we don't want to fight. We're tired of our kids and, like, husbands and wives dying for a war. Everyone but then they bring in something that I want them to bring in, as we have two pol politicians talking about if Yang Weili will become a dictator. Because the, the show is really pushing Yang into, like, okay, all these guys have, are idiots. Maybe I need to be in control. And this was an episode that really, really showcased that. Especially with Yang about near the end after it turns out that his, uh, I think it's his, like, adopted son, Julian, is being sent to Furzen on a military thing right and he doesn't like that hmm. so literally yang is like maybe i need to be a, f a dictator after all r.i.p and it's just interesting and i love it i think this series is really good i think people really really do need to watch it need to watch i still like the um that railgun scene, man. <laughs> they brought the railgun in for the first time. Yeah. Anywho, so that was Friday. Uh, let's see. Sorry, give me a second. There's something that I want to try. It's hard to believe I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine other animes left. No, oh, it Saturday it is now. <sighs> All right. Uh, I'll give a quick mention to Otaro Romeo. It's pushing forward the story and making uh, people understand. Like, you're, you're starting to learn more about Haku's past because he's like connected Haku, Haku. to how the world was built. Uh -huh. I also like how Kohan is like, okay, you're Haku. I know it. Now, can you finally... Like, she's doing everything in his power to give him a reason to live. Right. Since Haku at this point is just like, I've done what I need to do. I just want to get the fuck out of here. And uh, that was pretty much it for that. Um, Saturday also has stuff like My Hero Academia. I mean, it's still like the start of the or beginnings of the hero, or not not beginnings. The the still in the war arc, right? Yeah, it's the, essentially the second part of the war where uh, Tom Sh 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 Shigaraki Shigaraki has woken Sh up. And he's like, he has the power of one for, he has the power of all for one. Well, all for one. Yeah, I always get the mix up. And he's literally coming for Deku. He, wa he wants one for all. And I want one for all for one for one in battles. The one thing I like about this episode is it's already showcasing the death. We're having people die left, right, and center. By everyone. Also, Aizen is just, not, not Aizen, uh, the fucking bandage hero guy. The guy. Oh, fuck. It's so hard to remember names. Aizen? Yeah, you think you got it right. Did I get it right? That was Aizen Sensei, or whatever. Aizen Sensei. Aizawa. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Aizen, Aizawa, Aizen, Aiz Oh no, Aizen's oh. from... Aizen's from, um... Bleach. Uh, Bleach. But yeah, Aizawa, Eraserhead. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's just... They've done really good. And I'm definitely excited to see how this goes. Um, one thing I will say is that... I'm generally curious when this season will end. Will they just cover the war? Or will they cover the next arc after it? 
Maybe T's? I don't know. Just the war the war is long. Uh if I remember the uh the war was the longest of the series thus far. So like the first was four chapters, then a bunch of three. So like if we're looking at it, I think the war is the longest arc. Rise of the Villains is 24, 41, 6, 15, 10. Going training, meta liberation. Yeah, the war was 54 chapters. So, like, I generally believe we're only going to see the war, which is good because if I'm going to be honest, the Tartarus escape arc is just bad. But yeah, oh, so oh, uh, it's been okay. good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, next up on the list for me is Spy X Family. Yes. I like it. I mean, it's Spy X Family. I think the last they had a little was bit, they had a, what? The art project they had a little bit of, else? They had a little bit of filler, which is always good. I have I started... I was still filler, too. But still good. A little, a little bit. Well, I mean, they're pushing forward. They had a, I believe they had a private exam. They had the exam arc, right? Yeah, the exam was the one after Yoru tried to learn how to cook, right? Yeah, we had an episode. episode before that where, um, the, the just yeah, it's just so cute. But then there was the but, art one afterwards. Something? I think the art one was before the exam. Yeah, the art one was before the exam. Really? I thought it was after the one where they made the models of animals. No, that was before. The art, the exam arc was this week. Well, it was last week. But okay. what I was about to say is, if there's one thing I'm about Spike's family that I'm realizing, yours becoming an all-time favorite character of mine. Uh, you and everyone else. Uh, dude, she's really good! Oh my god. I mean, like she's really good. I really like your. But uh, outside next was Uzaki Chan, and I am. Lo <laughs> they introduced Uzaki's father, like, like he actually knows now, right? Oh, he How doesn't know. He doesn't know who exactly uh, Uzaki. It was last week that he like found out that we're... he hasn't found out about who exactly it is, right? I thought but he, like he he knows week. that Uzaki has been like yeah and it's just I loved every single second of his introduction because I I'm going to be honest some of my favorite characters are the fucking overprotective fathers it's I love them so much usually is usually is I'm pretty sure you admitted this before I don't know if I admitted it in, I'm pretty uh, sure you did tell me this a long time ago, and I'm like, oh, okay. I just love them so much. It's so funny. And huh. it, 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 it's forcing the story forward, because now Zaki has to realize, hey, do I want to, like, go out with this man, right? Do I want a relationship? Because what they did is, well, our main boy is graduating from college. So now it's oh. essentially build it up to, hey, will Uzaki finally ask him out? Oh. <laughs> Aruma-kun. Uh, I don't know if I watched this latest episode. Oh, uh, the latest the episode Harvest was also? Cunning Demons. It was the little bit of the Harvest Festival. We got to see some battles. Oh, it's the... Um... It's where Jazz and what's his name? Angle, hey. whatever. Oh, I forget his name now. Well, we also saw the uh, idol girl do some shit as well. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny that it's like Jazz and I forget his name. I think never showed up in any of those meetings at after school <laughs> or whatever that. I don't think they even, I don't know if they even showed up at school, actually, all the time, when they were, like, talking about their training, the individual students. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> that just shows like how they were completely abandoned during the training. Now, one thing I will it say explains it. This is some pretty funny details. Is we remember how episode three ended with the show of the bow and arrow, right? That he created. Yes. I kind of agree. The bow, the bow and arrow after the epic shot looks incredibly disappointing. Like when he uses it, uses it. Well, no, like just you, you know how some four starts off with uh, the girl giving him the go to knock off your socks. That bow and arrow looks incredibly underwhelming, as somebody pointed out in the Crunchyroll comments, and I tend to agree. Yeah, I, uh, I mean. I don't know. I actually don't know, because I haven't seen that episode. Well, I mean, just look at this bow, right? So, like, here, here's the picture of the bow. The bow in episode four, right? Look at it! Look at it! Yeah. And then... The here's from the, the picture first... of the bow in the epic thing. Right? Like, I can get why people say it looked a bit a uh, bit underwhelming. Uh, yeah. Not sure. But at the same time, you... I don't know. I can't really say much. Because uh, I feel like it's probably because he wasn't really shooting it or anything like that. But yeah, I, I get why that people think it's... An... I hope that's the case. Anyway, your mushy pedal. It exists. Move it on. Um, I don't. I don't want to talk about Blue Lock anymore. Do it. Oh, it's so bad. I think you just need to sit down and watch in Eleven. Like, here's the thing. He here's the thing. He calls the he calls the character he destroys unfit to be a striker because he meant. I said this when I was watching it, and this this is what got me. So he's calling him unfit to be a striker, right? After he made a 99.9% .9 play to score goal that was only stopped due to anime logic. Uh, because the guy predicted that he would pass instead of shoot. And he ran across the fucking field in half a second. Again, yes. that's anime logic. Would you like more anime logic? Well, no, it's just, you need some sort of realism. I... I don't know what to tell you, Mars. Like, again, the show wants to say, you're a horrible striker because you made the one, like, the right play and you only lost because I won due to anime. It's just like, no, fuck off. I think we need to watch an Azuma 11 together, really. Yeah, but an awesome all eleven is framed differently. Uh, like again, guess, this but... show is trying to play itself straight, and everything it's doing is going against everything you teach in football. I don't know if it really is, honestly. It, it is like so. It feels like it's trying, but it's not really. It feels like Should it's we... a half-hearted. It's like a half-boiled egg. Yeah, and it's not working. Like the animation, what, like when you when they actually get down to play the games, great, love the animation, right? But the whole story around it, I find to be one of the most stupid fucking things I've ever read. <laughs> Again, I went in thinking this is a horse, one of those horror death ones or whatever, like death I can see that. or something. Honestly, like that. honestly. If no. they had the players that failed fucking lobbed heads off after, it'd be great. Yeah, so I, I kind of just came into this with that sort of thought, so I really am not phased by anything in this one, honestly. I just, I went in looking like, eh, it's going to be exciting, and then I listened to the story, I'm like, you guys are some of the dumbest motherfuckers in the history of the world, aren't you? They're just trying to play on something that... Like, I love how he says, throw out. away your tactics, throw away all that, and literally all it's been is like, oh, these are tactics that we use to make ourselves better. I don't know. I just, I just walked in with thinking it was something that's not going to be... 
not gonna be taken seriously. And yet the show tries to take itself seriously, in my opinion, and fails miserably. Anyway, a lot of Saturday is over with Bochi the Rock. It's not over. I don't know what they're talking about. Well, it's over for me, at least. Bochi the Rock's really yeah, good. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Like, Bochi the Rock is really good. I like it a lot. I like how well the show deals with social anxiety. Hmm. And the music's pretty good. And it's nice to see that the episode ended with the girls getting passing their test so they can perform. Hmm. And yeah, it's just really cute, really good, and I love how they have pushed forward. And I love how a five ticket quota sends Bochi into just a freak out. Mm. Oh. Hello, my old. Yeah, it's really cute. All right, what's the shows you watch on Saturday? Your Eternity. That's a Sunday show for me. I don't know how that's a Sunday show for you. Is that really a Sunday show? Yeah, it was. Oh, is that Fumetsu no Anata? Okay, well, I must have... Okay, never mind. It's Sunday, I guess. Well, but I, you know me. I can't talk about it. It's just... I don't know what I watched then on Saturday. Maybe you watched nothing in the end. Maybe I didn't. No, I watched Spy X Family. I, I, that's why I agreed with you on the stuff. <laughs> I'm Look, Blue Lock, actually. I, I'm going to be honest. Two Year Eternity is interesting. Mm-hmm. It's compelling. It is one of the hardest watches ever because I feel like if I'm not fully paid attention to every single little detail, I will miss something. Oh, I'm sorry you feel like that. I thought the last two episodes was very, like, tear jerking. As usual, tear jerking. I or, think or episode the, the second episode of the episode. episode. I think episode three was a bit more emotional in the sense of you can see that just flamboyant motherfucker trying to do the right thing. I think two was a little emotional for me too. Cause... One thing I will, I am starting to get, I'm starting to get a little annoyed at Fushi's whole, I, if I can't protect everything, I'm a failure. I'm like, dude. You should have been through enough to at least realize that protecting everyone is impossible. I don't know, Marcel. Several, couple hundred years can do stuff to you, you know? Yeah, a couple hundred years would also teach you the ways of the world. Anyway! Yeah, but, you know, because of the fact that he's, he's gone through so much already as it is, I blame him. Anyway, Mobile so. Suit Gundam Witch of Mercury. Oh, fuck you, man. I was, I was gonna say something about that. I mean, I was gonna say a little bit about that. Well, then say something. I thought the second episode was fucking sad because he didn't realize it was Tonari and Sandal. <laughs> All right, you said something. Moving on. And I think the lead up for number three is gonna be so. I, okay, is it just me or is it flags? There's flags all the time in this in this anime, right? Yeah, pretty much. It's just undeniable, and the fact that the number three is just like the third episode with the prince. Oh my god, dude. Ah. Oh yeah, the prince and then the waifu, she's just like, oh, I'm gonna quit and kill myself if every one single person dies. I'm just like, fuck you, bitch. Uh, number three. Anyway, ah. Gundam Witch from the Mercury. By the way, it has no new episode this week. Uh, I didn't see that. I... You, you, you fuckers made Happy Birthday impossible to listen to. Uh, no, I, I'm gonna have to make a meme now. Every time anyone starts singing Happy Birthday, I have to make this, like, ear-piercing noise of, like, the mic just getting destroyed. The very end, like, just cut off, just like, Happy Birthday to you. Okay, then. Anyway, um, essentially the previous two episodes, well, three, built up this idea of... Sorry about the ear rate, people. Maybe Suleta isn't the character from the prologue. Maybe she isn't. Also, I she? just like I 
I really like the Ice Prince. I thought his whole character was great. Elan? Uh, or Elan or whatever? Yeah. You could see his anger and his jealousy. He's a guy literally built up to be the one to fix the issues with the Gundam formula that ends up killing the pilots. Indeed. Happy birthday to you. And then, you. shut up! Happy birthday to you. And then Stuletta shows up and makes his whole entire life completely pointless. Happy birthday be a- to you. Hey, for fuck's sake, shut the fuck <laughs> up with that stupid happy birthday. I'm trying to talk and you're interrupting me. Holy <laughs> shit. Not funny, it's annoying. Sorry. Fuck you. Honestly. So, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted every single time, it really does a good job at essentially destroying him. Oh, yeah, no. Like, he, his whole purpose. Whole purpose as, like, a double or cl- Was um, it a double or clone? I thought he was... Uh, yeah, it's like a double... He's a double... Yeah, he's a double. Yeah, because you anyway. saw you saw the uh, the other character. He was really yeah, yeah. I just the was a double or a clone. But what I was about to say is like his the whole purpose is destroyed. You know, his whole existence is just obliterated. Once, uh, of course, yeah. he'd, of course, he'd rage. And then, of course, we had the happy birthday scene at the end, which was just and he yeah. remembers. It, it touches them, and then... Yeah. Then he gets touched. By, by God. a laser. Okay, well, that works, too. But yeah, that's just all the anime of uh, well, We're fucking caught up for two and a half weeks. Holy shit. I feel like we missed something. Well, I've checked everything. Did you do... Did you have anything? I think I say this every day or every week. Well, you know what? Since it's anime, you want to talk about the Halloween EN three part series? Do you want an? Oh, uh, sure, sure. I mean, go for it. I mean, it. end it with that. I um, feel like this episode's already pretty long as it is, but go for it. No, I mean, I think it's better to talk about it in here than say a Zatsu. I don't so, really care. I don't all know. of. So. The oh, EN Girls released uh, a three-part series called Halloween EN. Essentially, it was Fauna writing them. And she wrote a three-part miniseries, and they're all about five minutes long. Hmm. And they're mini horror stories with little thematic themes, right? The first one was called Origin with Amegura and Fauna herself. The second one was called Oculus with Bay Iris, Kiara, and Kali. And then the third one is finally called Ophanium? Oh, Ophan. Ophanum, yeah. I think and they're something. all. Oh my god, Fauna's coming back. Based off of Faniel. Yeah. Sorry, I just saw a tweet from Fauna. She's returning to streaming tomorrow. For those of you who don't know, Fauna's uh, older cat passed away earlier this week. I don't know yeah. what's going on. Bye. Yeah, and mm. that's just. Yeah. It really, it, Fauna really loves her cats, and for Clover to pass away, it it broke a lot of people. Hmm. But she'll be back tomorrow, which is good. Roboco should be returning soon as well. She had a cat of hers pass away. Hmm. But anyway, um, so what I really liked about them is Fauna did a fantastic job of connecting them at the end. Uh, the very end one, yes. Yeah, but I just... So the first episode was a punch in the gut, right, with its ending. Hmm. 
the big reveal that, oh, Gura is the killer. I like it. Sorry, just replying to a friend. And the second one, though, was insane. <laughs> the whole you watching? Yeah, watching. Uh, the whole watching and how it ended with, you know, Callie killing Iris and Kiara ripping out her, all their eyes. As... And then, of course, the third one connects them in a way. Dude. Wait, yeah, the third one connects them in a way that isn't quite obvious, <laughs> right? As it doesn't outright show, but like, I think Mume especially did a fantastic job. While her voice acting was like small, I think she had what two lines, three uh... lines. Yeah, she had three lines. The fucking humming when Ina and Crony's characters are talking is so menacing. Mm. But what I liked is I came up with this theory. Now, a lot of people have the theory that the idea is like not wanting to go to VTubing alone. Uh, yeah. So like one of the reasons the the first episode was about like not wanting to step into this thing alone and whatnot then the second episode shows like the horrors of like being watched i think and this is my theory i think the idea is that it involves and i don't know i like i don't know if this is intentional but omega oh the Omega, Omega is lore. Ome well, look at Omega's lore. The end, the exiled of worlds. The cause of events was told to be the origin of ancient malediction, aka Omega's gaze. Oh. A lot of the whole things about the three were revolving around being watched, right? So the first episode had the first episode had eyes in the website screen. Of course, the second episode was all watch. And the third episode is crony switching the timeline, essentially, right? Hmm. Omega is usually an observer. It now takes an active role for unknown reasons, meaning that Omega is not an observer anymore. What if, what if Fauna used that as the basis? Huh. How the gaze of Omega was causing all these bad things to happen. So Gura killing, so Gura killing Ame and Fauna. The whole incident with Kali, right? What if that was the thing that was causing all the things to happen, right? Like, wouldn't that have been an interesting twist? Uh, he... Like, I doubt Fauna really planned for this since, uh... Yeah. I don't think... I Like, I think it's more talking about VTubing as a whole. But, like, just... When somebody pointed out Omega's lore, it made me think about it. Because at first I thought... It was more about the viewers and how they will keep watching no matter what. Since uh, the second episode kind of plays along the idea that the only reason this happened is because we kept watching. Hmm. Right? So the only reason Callie kills Iris Kiara and rips out her own eyes is because we kept watching. We wanted to see the suffering. So what if that instead the viewer was Omega and her observations caused everything? And now in the new timeline, Omega isn't the observer. We are. 
I'm out. And that's uh. why the girls can live a happy life. Oh. Uh. Right? I think that's a little... <laughs> I mean, that, that, that that's one way to interpret it, I feel. <laughs> well, it makes sense, doesn't it? It I mean, fits. Sure. Sure, but you could also make sense of a lot of other stuff. I'm just saying that's that's one way of thinking it. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I'm like I'm. Uh, there, there are so many theories you can make of this. Again, there's somebody who made a theory like an, an ology of v to, VTubing and like wanting to be with everyone, right? A fair depiction. Yeah. But like, I think there's a lot of good, fair reason. Of course, Fauna said she ain't gonna reveal like what she means with everything. Yeah, because she does. She wants people to have their own. But I like that there's so many good theories about it that fit. Like, I look at my Omega theory and I say, yeah, that fits. I look at that person and I say, yeah, it fits. Like, there's a lot of good things here. And I credit Fauna for being able to create something that really captivates. And I hope that cover pays attention and does more stuff with not just EN, with ID, with the stars, continues to do stuff with JP. And the one thing I will say, I do find it hilarious. I mentioned this to you before, but I'll mention it on on uh, this video now. Um, apparently, they wanted to use default art. Cover wanted to use default art, but the EN girls fought for it, right? So they fought hard for like getting actual artists in there and whatnot, right? Hyde stepped in. Yeah. That's... For yeah. those of you who don't know, Hyde is a really well-renowned Twitter artist who's done many things. Hmm. But I just find it funny that he stepped in and did all of that, plus the Muna art, since he was the one who did the Muna, the art for one of Muna's uh, things that she released for her. Oh, fuck. I think it was for her. Oh, God, I don't know. I can't remember anymore. It was the Potato Muna stuff. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Okay. Right? So he did all that while also releasing stuff for uh, Hall October every single day. And then he... Yeah. So, like, credit to you, Hyde, for stepping up. That's impressive. But yeah, no, so uh, that was Halloween EN. It was very good, and I hope to see more. Yeah. But this is the latest episode of the ARPG podcast, episode 60-something. Uh, 64? I think it was 65, actually. Uh, anyway. Also, rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. Bye. And this was... And that was it, ladies and gentlemen. So we will see you all next week. Hopefully we can get back into a pace of this. Hopefully we're not interrupted. Yeah. Also, next week is Pokemon. And Darktide. Yeah, yeah that's true. Oh, and Love Live and uh, Hollow Live are having a collaboration. Goodbye! Still think Kevin Conroy's the... Uh... Bye.